Hello and welcome back to 3ABN Sabbath School panel. I know you've joined us from week to week, but if this is your first time, don't forget we have more lessons to come on this exciting story of the book of Genesis. It's a story that talks about our beginnings and so many things that when you look at the book of Genesis, you begin to understand why the rest of the Bible is written the way it is. It's the only book in the Bible where sin was absent. Mm. And we find today that there's going to be so much more we're going to learn as we study the lesson, Jacob the Surplanter. Mm. But before we go any further, let me introduce you to our family, which some of those of you who join us from week to week may know exactly who we are. To my left is my good friend, Shelly Quinn from Texas. How are you doing, Shelly? I am blessed and I'm excited to continue studying Genesis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, the singer in Israel, you haven't sang this well, year. I don't oh, know what's well, up with you. you know, we've got to wait for the right, right opportunity. But today <laughs> we're going to be talking about the deceiver deceived. Oh, oh. Mm. Pastor James Rafferty, good to have you here. It is good to be here, and we'll be talking about the blessing of the family. Okay, and Pastor Kenny, the man who brings that flavor that is very fine and, uh, and, and mature. <laughs> good to have you here today. It's always good to study the Word of God together. We're going to be talking about Jacob when it's time for him to leave. Maybe some lessons we can learn also. Okay, well, why, why don't you start with prayer for us today? Okay, good. Let's pray, shall we? Loving Father in heaven, truly we thank you for the privilege and opportunity we have to come together to study the Word. We pray for the power of thy Holy Spirit. Touch our hearts, touch our lives, touch mm -hmm. our minds. Oh, Lord, may we only hear and see that which we need to today. May our hearts be open to heaven. Bless us now, we pray, every viewer, every watcher, everyone that's listening today, may their heart be turned toward heaven. Time is short. We need to be ready, and may they learn from this lesson, from the power of thy Spirit. Bless each one, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jacob the Surplanter. Our memory text is Genesis 27, mm -hmm. verse 36. Mm. Wow, what a story. Well. What a story that's going to unfold before us today. Uh, we've talked about relationships on the last lesson, but now we're going to talk about some of the things that are part of our family dynamics. Mm. Uh, families and friends and people that we tend to always rely on don't always have uh -oh. our best interests at heart. Sometimes they are thinking <laughs> what's best for them. Well. Look at Genesis 27 and verse 36. And Esau said... Is he not rightly named Jacob? Mm. For he has surplanted me these two times. Mm. He took away my birthright. And now look, he has taken away my blessing. Mm. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is an amazing story. Uh, two brothers uh, that in some degree, represents what we call sibling rivalry. Mm -hmm. One is controlled by appetite, the other is controlled by power. And you find, unfortunately, in this story, one parent loves one more than the other, uh -oh. and the other loves the other one more than the prior one. Mm. And so the story, the writer of the lesson picks up on the continued family history of Isaac. The miracle child, an early ancestor of the promised seed. And he writes, he says, the story doesn't start out particularly well, however. The flawed character of his son Jacob will be manifested in the rivalry between the two brothers over the birthright and consequently over the right to obtain the blessing of Isaac. So let's pick up Genesis chapter 25. And I'm going to read verses 21 to 34. Yeah, okay. Something I've been doing is reading the story because a lot of times we don't get to read those stories and That's see right. how they fit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then I'll do a comparison between the two brothers that brings out All an right. illustration that some of you may be experiencing. Verse 21 of chapter 25. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea. Mm -hmm. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if all is well, why am I like this? Mm. <laughs> That's, if, this yeah. is, if this is God's blessing, what's going on? Right. <laughs> From the very beginning, yes. they started struggling. So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, wow, two nations are in your womb. And to this very day, those two nations are at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. Two peoples wow. shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the other shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled to give birth, for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb, hmm. and the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over, wow. 
well. So they called his name Esau. Yeah. Afterward, his brother came out, mm -hmm. and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Mm -hmm. Isaac was 60 years old mm -hmm. when she bore them. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man, mm -hmm. dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, well. but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew, mm -hmm. a red man that likes red stew, <laughs> <laughs> for I am weary. Mm. Therefore his name was called Edom. Mm. But Jacob said, sell me a birthright as of this day. Ooh. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die anyway. Oh. So what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised uh -oh. his birthright. Mm. You know, his greed and his lack of appreciation for the birthright is what opened that door to Jacob given the opportunity to steal the birthright. Amazing how deep appetites are. Mm. This story talks about the depth of appetite. And I believe that's one of the reasons why servant of the Lord Ellen White says, if we can overcome appetite, we can overcome anything. Mm -hmm. How did man fall on the heels of appetite? Mm -hmm. Esau sold his birthright on the heels of appetite. Jacob was able to manip manipulate him because he knew that his appetite was stronger than his allegiance wow. to the blessing that was going to be passed down to him. So the question was asked, what qualities of Jacob predisposed him to be worthy of Isaac's blessing? Let's go down and look at a comparison. I put two columns together to look at some of the differences and the similarities that they had. One, Esau, the Bible talks about how he came out. He, was, he had red skin and was hairy. It's amazing how it says he had kind of like a garment of hair. Mm. And what nation do you think that's talked about today? Mm. The Muslim nation. Mm -hmm. A hairy nation that will serve the younger. And that's a battle that's still taking place in the Middle East to this very day. When we had a chance to go to the Holy City mm. or the, the Holy Land or the Bible Lands, uh, there was quite, you go into the city of Jerusalem and you have a Jewish side, you have a Muslim side. And they are still to this very day mm. concerned about who has the birthright to that city. On Jacob's side, there's no description of his appearance. So we have to assume mm. about his appearance. Mm. But one is a skillful hunter. The other one is mild mannered. And it said dwelling in tents. Today, it would say he's always in the house. <laughs> so he doesn't go out in the field at all. He's, in other words, his hands are clean. He's not uh -oh. really getting his fingernails dirty like his brother is. Mm -hmm. uh, Esau would be the guy with camouflage. Jacob would, would be the guy that's sitting behind the computer and keeping all the bills together <laughs> all right. and yeah, writing all the now. emails. Mm. Um, he was loved by his father. Esau was. But Jacob was loved by his mother. Mm. Esau requested that Jacob feed him. And Jacob took advantage of him because of his appetite. Wow. We find in Genesis 25, verse 32, and Esau said, look, I'm about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Mm -hmm. And Jacob said in verse 31 of Genesis 25, Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. Wow. Esau makes an agreement to give the birthright. Jacob asked Esau to swear away his rights. Mm. And this was a story that led to some kind of pursuit. When, when, when the father, who continually said, wait a minute, uh -oh. you, don't, uh -huh. you, don't, you don't sound like Esau. Well. He went even further to, to disguise himself with animal skin that was yes. hairy and still went to steal not only the birthright, but also the blessing. Mm -hmm. And that really angered Esau when he realized, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Uh -huh. And that's where Bethel became such a significant uh, staple in the story because Bethel is where the Lord met with Jacob when he wrestled, when he was running mm -hmm. from his brother Esau. Mm -hmm. And that was called the house of God or the place where God met him. And he wrestled. And God, in the moment of Jacob's f f uh, uh, 
uh, how, what's the word I'm looking here? Frailty. Mm -hmm. God said, because you wrestled with me. That was, and I think the wrestling there was synonymous today with us wrestling with God about our sin. Well. It wasn't just him having a tussle with God because he'd have lost. But he was wrestling with God to forgive him of his supplanting behavior. He was wrestling with God to ask for forgiveness. And God said, because you prevailed mm. with God and with man, I'm going to change your name. Amen. And later on, we know the rest of the story, there was a coming together. Esau was seeking Jacob's life, but the Lord worked it out so that the one pursuing taking to seek to take the life of his younger mm -hmm. brother, mm -hmm. God padded that and brought them yes. back into harmony together. Then we find Genesis 26 and verse 4 and 5. The Lord says, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. Mm -hmm. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And he says, why? Mm. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, yeah. my commandments, mm -hmm. my statutes, and my laws. You see, Jacob openly and purposefully deceived his father, even using the name of the Lord in vain. And that was the part that I believe he had to really grapple with God mm. about. I use the Lord's name. That's why mm. we are told, told today, let your yes be yes, and what else? No, no. And your no be no. Don't say, oh. I swear to God, I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. I've learned that if you're telling the truth, you don't have to remember the story. Mm. It's people that don't tell the truth that always say, what did I say? Uh, <laughs> how did I say that? Uh, mm -hmm. What was that I said? Yeah. If you are a person that your yes is yes and your no is no, then God will always be honored. Mm. Jacob faced the results of his deception. Mm. And how is that? The Bible says in Galatians 6 verse 7, do not be deceived. God is oh, not mocked mm -hmm. for whatever a man sows that he will also yeah. reap. Yeah. But God's mercy spared Jacob after his repentance. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 to 28. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And the Lord said to him in mm -hmm. verse 24, and he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob. In other words, you will not be remembered for who you were. Praise God. But you will be remembered for who I make you to be. But Israel mm -hmm. is the new name that the Lord gave to Jacob. For you have struggled with God and with men mm -hmm. and have prevailed. Here's my point before I pass to Shelley. Remember, there's a dividing line between your past and your future, mm -hmm. and you'll always find the Lord at the dividing line. Amen. Amen. And amen. Right. Thank you for amen. that foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we hear people who act like God is, or we don't see Jesus in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And Genesis is filled with appearances of the pre-incarnate Jesus, the angel of the Lord. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful stories. Now, I love that Jacob held on and wrestled with the Lord till he received a blessing. Yeah. And God changed his name because he was changing his character. Mm. But we're going to back up just a little bit before that story and look at Jacob's ladder. That's mm. Monday's lesson. Okay. And by the way, I'm Shelly Quinn. Okay, I'm going to read this uh, because this was really well worded straight from the quarterly. As soon as Esau learns that Jacob has received his father's blessing, he understands that he's been deceived and supplanted mm -hmm. by his brother, and he wants to kill him. Mm -hmm. So Rebecca is worried. She wants to prevent this crime that would be fatal for both sons. So with the support of Isaac, she urges Jacob to flee to her family. He's going to go live with his uncle Laban, who is not such a nice guy. But on his way to exile, here Jacob is about, you know, even though God forgave him, there's always circumstances, consequences is the word I'm looking for. There's always consequences mm -hmm. to sin. Yeah. So to prevent being killed, he is being sent away. And on the way to his exile, Jacob encounters God 
in a dream mm. at a place that he's going to call Bethel, the house mm. of God. So let's look at the story. Genesis 28 and verse 2. We're going to just read it. Genesis 28 and verse 10, excuse me. Genesis 28, 10 through 12. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had oh. set. And he took one of the stones of that place and he put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. He didn't have a memory foam pillow, did he? <laughs> then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. You know, I was studying this word ladder and actually it would be better translated staircase. And when I saw that, mm -hmm. it was exciting because mm -hmm. I remember once as I was praying, God showed me a staircase and mm -hmm. I was praying about surrender and trying to get up the next Come step of now. that. And God told me the only thing that was preventing me from going forward, oh. the wall of resistance yes. I kept hitting was that I was holding on to too much of self. Mm. I had to let go a little more of self. Right. Then he would reach down and bring me up to the next yeah. step. Mm. But I love that God gives this weary traveler a dream. Mm -hmm. This is a graphic portrayal of the Lord's personal involvement. This isn't like the Tower of Babel oh. being built and go trying to reach to God. No, this is God bringing down, letting down this ladder, this staircase. And he is coming down to earth to fulfill his covenant mm -hmm. promises. So the quarterly says, in this dream, Jacob sees an extraordinary ladder that is connected with God. And the same Hebrew verb, natsav, is used to refer to the ladder that is set up and the Lord who stood. So we see that the latter represented the Lord. Mm -hmm. They're the same thing. Mm -hmm. right. And we know that Jesus Christ is that latter. Mm -hmm. But when, as I mentioned, at the Tower of Babel, this was men trying to supplant God, if you will. They were trying to build and reach the heavens. Mm -hmm. But here... It's not by human effort. It's God who's coming down to show his personal care. Yes. So Genesis 28, verse 13. Behold, the Lord stood above it, stood above this ladder or this staircase. And he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, mm. and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Mm. God's about to renew the covenant. Mm. He has already renewed the covenant with Isaac, as you read in mm -hmm. Genesis 26, 4 through 5. Let's read that again. Mm. When God made this covenant with Abraham, remember this is the progressive unfolding of God's everlasting covenant. He renewed the covenant with Isaac in Genesis 26, Four through five, he tells Isaac, I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, here's, this is it. We're looking for the seed, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, God's covenant with Abraham was righteousness by faith. God said to Abraham, Abraham believed and God credited it, credited it mm. to him as righteousness. He mm. imputed to Abraham's account that righteousness. But sometimes people believe, oh, we're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. We don't need to worry about obeying. Right. But right here, mm. you know, all throughout Abraham's life, he walked by obedient faith. And right here, when God is renewing the covenant with Isaac in Genesis 26, he tells him why. Mm. He says in verse 5, Genesis 26, verse 5, 
hey, I'm doing this because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept yeah. my charge, mm. my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Yes. Amen. Please Thank listen you. to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Many people will say, I've had so many people say mm. this to me, you don't find the commandments of the Lord in Genesis. You've got to remember those first 11 chapters of Genesis are just a, a distilled overview of 2,000 years of history. Where you see the commandments of God truly is in the life of Abraham. And over and over it talks about how Abraham obeyed. Yeah. He was made righteous by faith, mm -hmm. but the fruit of that righteousness on, was faithful obedience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where were we in Genesis 28? Okay, Genesis 28. He's renewing the covenant. He says, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. Same mm -hmm. thing he said to Abraham. Now he's talking to Jacob. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and the south, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. This is God as protector and provider and his presence is constantly with him. I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I've done what I've spoken to you. Yeah. Not one word of God's promise has right. ever failed. Right. Right. So going on in verse 16, Genesis, now we'll read 28, 16 through 22. Jacob awoke from his sleep. You know what he says? Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that God promises as long as you are with him, he's with you. Mm -hmm. God is in this place. That's right. Are we acknowledging it? Come Do on. you acknowledge God's presence in your life? And he was afraid. This is a healthy fear. Mm. And he said, I love this, how awesome yes. is this place. Mm -hmm. This is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Mm -hmm. Babylon. Oh, no. Babylon tried to set up a counterfeit That's gate right. of heaven. Mm -hmm. But it's God coming down from heaven to us. Then Jacob rose early in the morning, took the stone that he put at his head, set it as a pillar, poured oil on top of it and he called the name of that place Bethel. And it had been previously called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow. This is interesting. He says, if God will be with me, keep me in the way that I'm going. Give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I may come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my mm -hmm. God. He's just repeating what God mm -hmm. told him he'd do. And this stone which I've set up as a pillar shall be God's house. And all that you give me, mm -hmm. I will surely give a tenth to you. Mm -hmm. So again, we see the idea of tithing, right. the yes. principle right. is here before the rise of the nation of Israel. Wow, thank you yeah. so much, Shelley. Wow. It's really wonderful how the lesson is unfolding, but you know mm. we have three more days left, so <laughs> don't go away. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Ever wish you could watch a 3 ABN Sabbath School panel again? Or share it on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter? Well, you can by visiting 3ABNSabbathSchoolPanel.com. A clean design makes it easy to find the program you're looking for. There are also links to the Adult Bible Study Guide so you can follow along. Sharing is easy. Just click share and choose your favorite social media. Share a link. Save a life for eternity. Welcome back to 3ABN Sabbath School. Now we're going to go to Tuesday, which Ryan Day has. All right. Yes. I'm Ryan Day, and I am blessed to have the lesson number, well, we're in lesson number nine, but this is Tuesday's lesson entitled, The Deceiver Deceived. Well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting because we've just come through, you know, Monday and Tuesday's lesson, or Sunday and Monday's lesson, where we've learned about, you know, Jacob in his early years, and of course now he's had this spiritual awakening, as uh, uh, Shelley just brought out. He's had an encounter with God, mm -hmm. and so now he is spiritually awakened. Right? God has God has promised him that he's gonna he, he's he's made these promises to him, and now he is in relationship with God. But yet he's still fleeing Esau. Right? So he's on his way out, and he's got to meet up with Uncle Laban. And uh, you know, I have been assigned thirty verses, wow. <laughs> almost the entire chapter of Genesis chapter 29 
And uh, in Genesis chapter 29, uh, verses 1 through 30, we find that now he has made it to the land of Uncle Laban. Now, I'm not going to read the first, uh, the first 15 verses or so, probably the first 14 verses. This is where he's arrived. He makes his way and he finds this well and he sees some people coming at him. Yeah. Obviously, he asks them there. He says, hey, is this, do you know Laban? Are you aware of who Laban is? Yeah, we know Laban. Mm -hmm. Is he well? He's well. All right. And so he realizes he's talking to Laban's people. And then out comes uh -oh. Rachel. And he's put, plays, he puts his eyes on Rachel for the first time. And he comes to find out that Rachel, of course, is, is Laban's daughter. This is his cousin. And he goes and he embraces her and he weeps and he you know, praises God that he's now found his, his family. Mm -hmm. But now we pick up in verse 15. Uh, right there in verse 14, it says that he stayed with him a month. So he's been with Uncle Laban and Rachel and the family for about a month now. And now we pick up in verse 15. This is where Jacob... Uh, states his case for marrying Rachel because he's fallen in love with Rachel. Mm. So now it says in verse 15, Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? This is Genesis chapter 29 beginning with verse 15. Uh, so we just read verse 15. He says, Tell me what your wages should be. Mm. Verse 16, Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And then verse 17, Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. Yeah. Uh, now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Yeah. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. So he's happy. Sure, I'll give you. Uh, oh, no, you can take my daughter Rachel to be your wife. Mm. Uh, but he says, stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, mm. and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. I like that, that the yeah. seven years didn't seem like anything. He's so yeah. in love with this girl, he's ready to marry her. Oh, it just seemed like a few days. Mm. And then verse 21 here, it says, Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for the days are fulfilled <laughs> that I may go to her. He says, Hey, Uncle Laban, time's up. It's been seven years. I, I, I want my wife now. Uh -huh. And so verse 22, And Laban, Laban yeah. gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Mm. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took, notice, Leah, his daughter, uh -oh. and brought her to Jacob. Mm. And he went to her. And Laban, uh, yes, he went into her. And Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that behold, it was Leah. Oh, no. And he said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Oh, what it, Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Mm. Why then have you, here it is, ding, oh. ding, ding. Why have you deceived me? Okay, now he's getting a little bit, uh, he, he's, he's getting a little bit of the same medicine that he gave his brother uh -huh. and his father. Okay, in verse 26, And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we can give you this one also for the service, which you will serve me yet still another seven years. And then verse 28, Then Jacob did so, and he fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife, and Laban gave his maid... Uh, 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 Bila to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went to Rachel, uh, went into Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah, oh. and served with Laban yet still another seven years. So when it says here that he fulfilled her week, this is customary, uh, you know, a, a marriage celebration in the biblical days, and I think even in the culture still today of uh, Jewish Orthodox, uh, we see very clearly that it's it's a it's a celebration of a week long. And so basically, he, Jacob did not technically have to wait another seven years before he was given. He waited to fulfill the marriage ceremonial rites of the seven days uh, for, with Leah. And then after the seven days, Laban honored his, his words. He gives Rachel to him, but yet he still had to stay and work another seven years uh, for, with, uh, for, for Rachel in this case. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's interesting here because, you know, you would, <laughs> in today's time, you would, you know, you hear people say, boy... <laughs> you know, uh, and, 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 and not to be disrespectful here, but yeah. back in my day, in my heathen days, you would hear people say, you know, slang and different things well, that was well. often inappropriate. And some people would say, you know, karma is a bad word. And they would, you know, say something like that. A lot of people put this, oh, karma, it's all karma. Let me tell you something. That's a Hinduistic term, a Hinduistic concept. It's full of spiritualism, has nothing. Actually, the truth is the Bible predates this, this uh, Hinduistic teaching of karma. Karma is not a real thing. Mm -hmm. But in this case, the Bible passage that clarifies 
typifies very much the principle is that you reap what you sow. Well, and in this case, Jacob was reaping what he sowed. Even yes. though he's in relationship with God, he still has a lot of growing. He still has a lot of learning. Wow. And in this case, it's interesting because back in the day when I was a kid, and I, you hear still, still hear people say it today, boy, they can, they can dish it out, but they can't take it. Uh. And that was the case of Jacob. He, he could dish it out. He was all about yeah. deceiving his father and his brother yeah. to get that, to get that uh, blessing. Mm -hmm. But yet now, when he is the one being deceived, when the deceiver is being deceived, now it's, all not, it's not so fun in games. Right. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I, as I was reading this story, I took away just some lessons, just some very simple uh, but, but practical lessons that we also as Christians today, we can glean, we can learn from this. Mm -hmm. And that is the fact that, you know, there's a lot of people that are so selfish and self-centered. Jacob, while he's now in this new relationship with God, he's got a whole lot of selfishness that needs to be rooted out. Mm -hmm. He's still kind of into himself. He still expects the world to evolve around him. And in this case, you know, he's starting to see that when he's now with Uncle Laban, thing, you know, it, it works by Uncle Laban's rules. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Laban calls the shots. And in this case, he got tricked by Uncle Laban. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because Matthew chapter 7, kind of on the same point that I made earlier, you know, that you reap what you sow. Jesus even confirmed in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. He says, judge not that you be not judged judged mm, come on for with what judgment you judge you are or you will be judged mm. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So now look at Jacob. He's all upset. He's mad. He's angry. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have you done to me? You've deceived me. Mm. He dished it out back here. But now he's on the receiving end of this. He can't handle it. And he's now wanting to pull that, that, uh, that speck out of Uncle Laban's eye. But notice what Jesus goes on to say here. Again, this is that powerful Sermon on the Mount. He says, and do you, not, do you, uh, do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own? Oh, Jacob had a big old plank of yeah. deceiving. Come plank on. in his own eye that, that needed to be rooted out. In this case, he says, do, not, do you not consider the plank in your own eye or how you uh, can say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, Jesus says. First remove the plank from your own eye. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So we see that, you know, Jacob is he's starting that sanctification process and it, all, and it ultimately, in this situation, ends with him now being deceived. You know, we got to be careful because this kind of self-deceptive spirit often uh, will kind of infiltrate our heart, our mind. It'll even infiltrate the church. Sometimes we got to do some self-examination, yes. take some spiritual inventory of our own heart because I can tell you, my friends, the backbiting and the gossiping and the plotting and the conspiring in secrecy, it, is, it, has, it often floods in the ranks of the churches. It often floods in the, in the home. And this type of thing ought not have any place for a Christian and in a Christian's life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13. 13 and 14. We're talking about self-deception. Uh, Jacob was self-deceived, but now he's on the receiving end of deception. Notice what Ecclesiastes 12 verses 13 through 14 says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. But then verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment. Do you think God had forgotten about what, what Jacob had done? And that there wasn't a lesson to be learned from that? God will bring every work into judgment yes. with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yes. Jacob had conspired with his mother to deceive. Now Laban had conspired to deceive Jacob. And so the deceiver had been deceived in this yes. sense. Uh, there's a few things that we can learn. I'm, I'm actually running out of time. I don't have enough time to read the rest of this. But, you know, we need to understand that we have to be, we have to place ourselves in a humbling state. Jacob mm. was humbled yes. in this moment. Don't think he wasn't. Mm. He was humbled in this moment, as we all often are. Sometimes yes. we've got to eat some crow. Yes. Sometimes we've got to, you know, we've got we to gotta, we gotta take a little bit of what we've dished out. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's all for growth. If we have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us, if Jesus yes. Christ is in our heart and mind, sometimes we might have to take a little bit of what we've dished out, but we will learn and grow in the process. That's why I love uh, 2 Chronicles chapter. Chapter 7, verse 14, one of my favorite texts. Yes. God just pouring out his heart here. If my people oh. who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from his wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank Amen. you, Ryan. That was a perfect yeah. setup for right. the lesson that I have. My name is James Rafferty, and I have Wednesday's lesson, which is entitled The Blessing of the Family. And it's actually a continuation of the same chapter that Ryan had in chapter 29, the last few verses, and then we're going to go right into chapter 30. See, for Jacob, the last seven years, the quarterly says, of his exile were a burden, and yet they were also the most fruitful years, because in them, Jacob 
will father 11 of his 12 children mm -hmm. who will become the ancestors of God's people. Okay, so Genesis chapter 29 verses 31 to chapter 30 verse 22 is the section we're going to be looking at. And we can't read all of those verses. There's a lot there. But... I just want to start by saying that we are dysfunctional. Now, sometimes when we think about dysfunction, we think, oh, they're dysfunction. Yes, they're dysfunction. Yes. That family over there is dysfunctional, and that church over there is dysfunctional. No, mm -hmm. we as human beings are quite dysfunctional. And this story, well, I've struggled with the story for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really have. You know, all that we're about to just touch on here. And I'm realizing God a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of love is reaching down into our dysfunction. He's healing us. He's Praise helping God. us. Yeah. He's molding us. He's rebuking us. He's transforming us. There's a lot of hope in this story. Let's read just a couple of the highlights here. Uh, Ryan, you ended up with the verse where it says that, that um, Leah was hated or Rachel was loved more than Leah. I've got the verse, verse 31, where it says, and when, Leah can, when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, mm. so your verse said that Rachel was loved more than Leah, but mm. my verse says, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated. Now, I just want to stop there just for mm. a second. When the Lord saw right, right. that Leah was hated. Uh -oh. Now, we're going to be looking at this from God's perspective. We're not going to be looking at this from a human perspective. Mm. This chapter is all about how God sees us and right. how God sees things. So when the Lord saw that Leah was, was hated, mm. he opened her womb. Mm -hmm. But Rachel, mm. Rachel oh. was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, verse 32, and called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Whoa, her affliction. What's her affliction? Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Uh -oh. She just wanted to be loved. Yeah. She just wanted to be loved. Right. Now, think about this. Jacob was a deceiver because his mother, okay. Laban's oh. sister, put him up to it. He didn't come up this by himself, yeah, right? right? It was Rebecca. Yeah. And he was kind of like, no, no, I don't think we should do this. No, we need to do this. We need to do this. Uh oh. Now we've got Leah. Leah was a deceiver because her father, mm -hmm. Rebecca's brother, mm -hmm. put her up to it, right? So mm -hmm. Jacob was really kind of caught in the middle, mm -hmm. and Leah was kind of caught in the middle. Right, you know, yes. they're, they're both influenced by these two parents, right. right? And they're caught in the middle. And so Jacob should be able to empathize a little bit mm -hmm. with Leah's situation, yeah. but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. But who does? Yeah. When humans can't empathize with us, when humans can't step that. into our relationship, mm -hmm. our experience, yeah. God can. God always steps in. Right. And he always picks up where humans leave off. Mm -hmm. So the Lord saw that mm -hmm. she was hated and gave her a yes. son, and he called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bare a son and, and said, This time my husband will be joined unto me because I bore him three sons. Oh, she was just so excited. Mm -hmm. One son yeah. after another was coming. Yeah. She conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now we'll praise the Lord. What? has just happened. Mm -hmm. She's transitioned from her relationship with her husband mm -hmm. to a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that's right. what God wants like to that. get us. Mm -hmm. That's where God wants Beautiful. to get us. He wants to get us away from our desire to have the love and the companionship and the support of people. And first and foremost, He wants to get us yes. to the place where we have the love and companionship and the support of God. Amen. He's that's going to be there for us right. in all of these struggles and all of these difficulties. Amen. Now, when Rachel, verse 1 of chapter 30, saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. You see what's going to happen here in this family dynamic? Rachel should be happy for her sister. She should be saying, praise the Lord that you've got all these kids. But no, we can't do that. You see, we're all dysfunctional. We can't do that. She's envying her sister. And then she says to Jacob, give me a child or I'm going to die. And Jacob says, wait a minute, wait a minute. So he gets angry at her. This is all about dysfunctional relationship, dysfunctional family relationships. And then it's all about how God works through that Amen. and overrules all that. So she goes to her handmaid and her handmaid uh, gives Jacob a child and of course she claims that, uh, Rachel claims that for herself and then she Bil Bil Bilhah gives her another child so she has two from Bilhah and then Rachel says, you know with great wrestlings I've wrestled with my sister and I prevailed. You're not wrestling with your sister, you're wrestling with yourself. Yeah, you're wrestling with your own heart, your own mm -hmm. fallen heart who has this envy inside of it against your sister mm -hmm. who is just found herself caught in the middle, just like Jacob found right. himself caught in the middle. Let's look at this from God's perspective. Mm. And so as you continue on through the story, you see handmaids coming in, you see sons being born to Jacob. Jacob uh, finally gets to the place where uh, Leah is, um, well, 
God listens to Leah over and over again until finally we're told in verse 22 that God remembered Rachel and God hearkened unto okay. her and opened her womb. Mm -hmm. mm. Leah's come to the place where she's almost like completely satisfied, like God has really blessed me, God has really given to me. Right. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's not until we are satisfied yeah. in our relationship with God that we can really and truly be a blessing to others. That's right. Mm -hmm. As long as we're still hungry and we're still dysfunctional, we're still craving for some kind of security, mm. we are unable to flow out to others That's good. in the way that God wants us. Yes. Exactly. Yes. But if we fill up with the Holy Spirit in the presence of God, that can, God, that can overflow and we can be a blessing to yes. others instead of being envious and jealous and hateful mm. toward others. So much hate, so much envy, so much insecurity, manipulation taking place in this dysfunctional family. And yet God overrules with his grace and with his love. None of the members find themselves enemies of God. God loves them. Mm -hmm. Rather, they are recipients of his mercy, of his understanding, of his sympathy, uh -huh. of his blessing. This reveals, to me, this reveals more of the character of God. Right. Because really, that's what the whole story oh, is about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. God has been misrepresented and God is vindicating himself. His character is being vindicated. He's going to you say, I, you know, I struggle with this. Like, why did God bless Leah? Leah deceived Jake. Why did God bless Leah? That's, that was my struggle. Mm -hmm. okay. But when we look, we step back and we look at the mm -hmm. big picture here, Leah's caught in the middle, just like Jacob was caught in the middle. Yes. And God loves Leah, and That's God right. loves Jacob, and God loves Rachel, oh, and nice. God loves Laban, and God loves Rebecca. And there's some consequences here they're going to reap. You know, Laban doesn't see his kids anymore. Uh, Rebecca didn't get to see Jacob ever again. There's some consequences that are going to come to us wow. when we act out like this. But God works through it all to bless and to help us. He loves us. He loves each one of us and he works through all of our insecurity and all of our dysfunction and the dysfunction of our family and of our relationships and of our world to reveal his character of love. And that's really what heals us. That's really what, what brings us back to, yeah. to where we need to be. Yeah. So this great controversy is, is all about this misrepresentation of character, especially the character of God and how God is working to unravel to, un to reveal to re the revelation of Jesus Christ. God is working to bring us the revelation of Jesus Christ. The very last book of the Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And this is really what redeems us. This is what brings us back to the image of God is a revelation of his character. So, so you know, I struggled with the sympathy for Leah and then I started seeing this big picture and I started realizing, wow, she was caught in the middle. And really, we're all caught in the middle, aren't we? Yeah. Each one of us. And God knows our struggles. He knows our sorrows like no other person can. It, rem it reminded me of the idea that, you know, we can't judge others until we walk in their footsteps, right. Right. right? And I wasn't walking yeah. in the footsteps of Leah, you know? I wasn't right. able to relate to her, you know? And, and I thought, why did she do that? And, but now mm -hmm. I realize, wow, she's just like mm -hmm. us, caught in the middle. Yes. And Leah is struggling. Her sorrows are so telling in the names of her sons. And this is a powerful revelation. You know, Reuben, he, he was called Reuben because God saw, he saw what I was going through. He saw the struggle. This is right from mm -hmm. the quarterly here. And, and then in addition, she gives the name of Simeon because God heard. Mm. God has heard me. He's heard right. and seen the depths of my humiliation and my pain and has had pity on me. And, right. and, and Leah's son, Simon, you know, God gives birth to her last son. She calls him Judah mm. because God, it means praise. She wants to praise God. She connects with God. Mm -hmm. She sees God as the ultimate uh, way that she can be fulfilled, that she can have security in this life. So as we look at this, we, we recognize that, that God is all about our personal struggles. Mm -hmm. And when other people don't understand us, when other people don't recognize what we're going through, God does. Mm -hmm. And God will be there for us. And God will bless us. Yes, will. God will provide for us. And God will cause us to praise Him. To right. give him glory, you know, fear yeah. God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Yeah. Amen. So that principle that God has everything required, he'll bring everything, every secret thing to judgment, whether it's good or evil, we can trust him for that. That's right. And we can believe that he will bless us in spite of our circumstances, in spite of the way that the humans around us, even our closest family members may treat us. We can trust in God to bring us through yeah. by his grace. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Awesome. I, yeah, I've enjoyed each one of you very much and, and learned some things and reminded Reminded of some things and maybe some self-examination for, for myself. I'm Kenny Shelton. I have uh, Thursday's lessons. We're going to talk about Jacob leaves. And I got thinking about that as I went over the lesson. I think, you know, there's, there may come a time in our, our own life, sometime in our own life, that it may come time to uh, 
it's maybe t to leave. It's, it's time to pick up. It's time to change. It, it could be a job. It could be, you know, where we live. It could be you know, e even ministry. There's time sometime that we, we pick up and we need to go. There's changes that need to be made. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we don't understand all the ins and the outs of it or, the, you know, when, where, and why and all this. But we rely upon God, right, leading and directing and using others you know, and this is exactly what happened when it was time for Jacob to leave because he had some real some, some issues. He waited till God certainly told him to, but there were other things, and we'll try to get into that as we go along. So how do we really know? You may be asking the question, how do I, how do I know? If, I, if it's time for me to leave, maybe find another job, maybe go somewhere else to do something. You know, how do, I re how do I really know? Again, the when, where, and what. If God is leading or maybe it's just something inside of me. Hmm. Maybe it's just because a lot of times people want certain things. They, they want to be a certain place. They want to do a certain thing. And sometimes, the best way I hear people say sometimes is, well, God told me. Well, if God told you, I'd say go right ahead, get started. Right. If we know that God really told us, or is it something inside? So, you know, good self-examination. Our, our, our lesson, I think, really brings out that uh, God's going to impress us. You know, it could be through a dream, through the Word, whatever it might be. And uh, maybe events that's taking place in our own life that we can know when it's time to make that move. And so we come to Jacob and his life now. It's time to make that move. It's time to get back to fulfill the word of God. So Thursday's lesson starts with a little background. Each of you, I think, have mentioned it here. A little background of some heavy-duty deception. Mm. Right? We look at the deception. Jacob, we know, deceives his father. We understand that, right? And he's deceived with his brother. Now Jacob is deceived by his, I, w I want to call him, his, can you say father in law? We say an uncle here, but mm. father in law? That's right. C can we say that too? Yes, we can. Well, I'm, I'm just asking the questions. What, what, it ended up, end up being, didn't it? Uh, uncle, right. so I don't want to say the wrong thing here, but there's a lot of deceiving going on. And uh, interesting, Jacob knew he was being deceived. Mm hmm. He understood what was taking place, but he didn't really put up a fight. He didn't resist it. It was some unfair demands. And if you're like me, if you think something's unfair, sometimes you have something to say about it. Mm. And maybe not. He, he didn't say anything really about it, and it, 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 but it seems to go against his character. And so we have to look kind of deeply into that. Uh, maybe he should have. Maybe he should have just you know, uh, made an attempt to wheel and deal. Mm. Isn't right? When Laban said, this is what I'm going to require for this one and that one, hey, wait a minute, let's, 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 let's do half that time. What do you say, man? Isn't that kind of what most of us would do? Man, why do seven? I can do three and a half, you know. So we uh, bargain. When you go to a store, you bargain sometime, right? You work on it. You try to get a deal. Cut some time off. But, you know, well, Genesis 30, 25, and 26 said time for Jacob to leave. Jacob said to Laban, notice this, send me away. It's like he was tied there, and he was through co commitment and so on. He said, send me away that I may go into my own place and to my own country. He realized there's a time for him to move on. That's right. It's something for him to do. God still had a plan for him. Our lesson brings out that Jacob is concerned about setting up his own house, mm -hmm. which I think most of us probably are. Don't you think sometime in, in our life we're kind of interested mm -hmm. in right. maybe getting out on our own and, and you know picking up some things and doing and in Genesis 30, verse 30, uh, it says, After all, Jacob wanted to be on his own. That's what Genesis 33 talks about. He wanted to be on his own, and he felt that he had fulfilled his agreement. And most of us, if we really feel like we have fulfilled the agreement that we made with somebody, you make an agreement with a bank, you buy a house, when you make that last payment, mm. there's an agreement there. Come on, give me that deed. You know what I mean. You, 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 you want to say, okay, the agreement has been fulfilled. And so now he begins to plead his case. And if you don't mind, you know, a lot of reading. Everybody's talked about a lot of reading to do. So I'm going to kind of forbear and go over that. But, but, I, but I'll tell you where I'm from. Genesis 31, 41. It's actually just one verse. But if you allow me to do some paraphrasing here, and then if I'm off, somebody can tell me, right? You're going to go along with it. We don't want to get off the record here. But, you know, when we're, when we're wheeling and dealing in this case, when he's pleading his case, right, because he's, he's, it's time to leave, but do you think Laban's going to let him leave easily? You think he's just going to say, oh, well. Mm. Remember, he, he's had his socks blessed off. Yes. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's right. He became a rich man because of Jacob. Is that not true? It's true. Mm -hmm. True. And you're not going to let that golden egg. <laughs> you're just not going to let that out. You're going to try to wheel and deal and bring him back, find something here. So let's just do Genesis 31, 41 says, I want to say, <laughs> if I can do it, look, Dad. 
He's going to talk to him. You know, it made father-in-law, and they had a little more respect. But nowadays, you're going to, and you might call him Pops. Right. I'm not sure about that. Somebody might go, look, Dad, now look, here, I've, I've been with you for 20 years. Mm -hmm. right? I've been with you 20 years, and really without a complaint. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I've worked hard. I mean, I worked for 14 years for your two daughters. Mm. Now, it's kind of sad to think about, at least in my mind. I'm looking, I'm thinking, he, Dad sold his daughters. Basically, it's like slaves. Mm. Isn't that right? Well, I'll take seven years' labor for her, and I'll take... Okay, that's... And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said, I've, I've given all this time. I, he might have said once, my best years. I've given my best year. Dad, now look, my lands, look, what's wrong here? You don't seem happy about that. I just said, basically, may I go? I want to set up my own household, and it's time for me to go back. I've been gone a long time. Mm -hmm. So why, why can't I go? But it seems clear you are not happy with me. Okay. And why? You say, well, you know, he says in that verse, he talks about, you know why? And I think Jacob looked at me and said, you know why, Dad? And you're not, because you've changed my wages ten times. Mm. Right. Mm. Well, something was a little bit shaky there, right? How could he do that? And That's you, true. Hey, somebody comes up to you and changes your paycheck by $100 a week, you might have a little Ooh. issue with him. Something's not right. So... He said, when I came here, I want to put it this way. You didn't have two nickels to rub together. <laughs> Maybe you did, but you didn't have very much when I came here. God blessed you because of my work here. God blessed you now very much. And don't forget it. And he, he wanted to say when he was getting ready to leave because he's going to take some cattle right with him. He said, don't forget, I worked six years for those cattle. I, you know, I'm going to take them. Jacob had been gone from home for a very long time time. Now it was time to get back. It was time for him to return. Jacob waited for God to give him clear direction, right? During that time, I think it's been brought out, Jacob learned a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. He learned, you know, really true love for God, and, and he waited for permission to go, and I think that's, that's always good in our life. Wait till God, right, if God brings you Break, takes you from someplace and plants you over here, make sure the same God is taking you from here and replanting you somewhere else rather than you. I think we've all seen that if we've been around for a while. Sometimes people replant themselves. Okay, Jacob learned patience and faith, right? God finally directs Jacob to leave Genesis 31, 13 quickly. Now, he said, Now arise and from this land and return to the land of thy kindred. Now, was it time? Absolutely. Why? Because God said it was time. That's number one. But notice, I'm going to give you three other quick reasons why maybe that it was time for him to go that weighed on Jacob's mind. I don't think he was a coward by any means, but he, there's many times in there, notice he was afraid of something. Right. Something was going to happen. Right. Now notice what Genesis 31, 1 and 2, Jacob had Laban's sons saying, hey, this, this cat, mm. this, guy has, <laughs> this guy has come in, right? And he's, he's taken things that are probably going to be ours and dad's gone. Right. And he heard it was such talk, I think he, Feared for his life that something might happen if he didn't leave. And then all of a sudden, what? Laban all of a sudden began to look at Jacob, what? A little different. Mm -hmm. A little bit different eyes. In other words, it wasn't the same as what the Bible talks about here. It was, he was not the same toward him as before. So he acted right a little differently, quickly. Four things noticed that took place. So, you, so he knew when it was time to leave. Jacob knew it was time to leave, we mentioned, because... God told him. I think that's just a real good simple. God told him to, right? But in case he missed that, God's told me some things sometime. At least I, I, I sense in my mind and, my, and I didn't do it. Well, there's a price to pay. There's scars. You know, there's scars that will always be there, like right. scars on Jesus for eternity. We may he get forgiveness and things are good, but we're going to carry those scars in this, in this life. God told him. Number two, Laban's sons, we talk about, seemed to be a threat to him, so he needed to get out. Laban turned against Jacob. And let's remember this fourth point here. Remember, Jacob would have left a lot sooner, but he was still fearful of his brother Esau. Mm. You know, read that if you haven't got time. You know, if you, yeah. when you take time, that's in Patriarchs and Prophets 198. Jacob would have left his crafty kinsman long before, but for fear of Esau. Mm. You know, praise, you know, just praise God, right? He's still leading, he's guiding, make mistakes, he fills us back up, sets us up, but it's, God's plan is going to be fulfilled. Hang in there, you can hang right with God. Amen, amen. amen. Wow, well, praise thank you, Pastor Kenny. Shelley, summarize your day. 
Huh. I, I, instead of summarizing the day, let me just give you this, because we were talking about the staircase. Jacob has the ladder yes. to heaven. I wanted to just share from Second Peter, because I think of this as kind of the staircase to heaven now. In Second Peter chapter 1, it says that God has given us everything we need for life and godliness and, and to partake of this divine well. nature. But then look at verse 5. Here's our staircase. It says, For this reason, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, mm. perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Mm. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. we, Jacob saw God come down from heaven. Mm -hmm. God came down from heaven to us to teach us how to, to develop these characteristics wow. in us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen, amen. Don't be a deceiver. Come on now. <laughs> As an eternal principle, truth always wins. Yes. It always prevails. I love what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And here's that famous verse, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. 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 You know, we often think of the Bible and even the church as a place of perfection. Mm -hmm. But it is also a place of dysfunction. Yes. And yeah. God in His love and His grace and His mercy meets us at that place of, as, of dysfunction and He heals us. Amen. 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 You know, it took Jacob some time to learn these things of, of God's grace and what it really meant to trust Him and to live for Him. And I just simply say that's good counsel for us today. Let's just take that. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kenny, James, Ryan, Shelley. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. This has been a, an amazing lesson. Jacob, the supplanter. Mm. Once again, I want to reiterate, and I like what you said, James. God meets us at a place of dysfunction and heals us. Yes. None of us is exposed to God and leaves the way he finds us. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's, the beauty of, that's the beautiful message of not only salvation, but restoration. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the message we want to leave with you today. Yes, yeah. you may have had experiences in your life that have supplanted your joy, mm -hmm. but expose yourself to Christ in the way that he can redeem you and things will change. Amen. Join us next time for lesson number 10, Jacob and Israel. Mm -hmm. Here's a thought, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Yeah. You don't have to take the birthright. It's yours yeah. through Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.